John Barnett was found dead in his car outside his hotel. He was 62 and known for being the whistleblower on Boeing safety oversight. Days before he died, John was giving testimony and evidence in a lawsuit against Boeing's manufacturing quality. He was supposed to go through more questioning the following Saturday, but when he didn't show up, they went to his hotel and found him dead in the hotel car park with a gunshot wound to his head. Boeing's PR gave a statement. We are saddened by Mr. Barnett's passing and our thoughts are with his family and friends. Sure they are. Probably more relieved than anything. His death is ruled as a suicide for now, but it wouldn't shock me if Boeing hired someone to murder him or the lawyers threatened to ruin his life if he didn't comply. I mean, this wouldn't be the first time Boeing killed someone. So who is John Barnett? He worked at Boeing for 32 years as a quality manager and spent the latter half of his career at Boeing's North Charleston plant. Newly built in 2009, this was supposed to be a state-of-the-art factory responsible for manufacturing the 787 Dreamliner. It was a revolution when it came out in 2009 because it advertised 20% lower fuel consumption, making it super popular with airlines looking to save money on gas. The existing factory in Everett, Washington wasn't enough to meet the surge in demand, so Boeing built a new factory in North Charleston. South Carolina sweetened the deal by offering $1 billion in tax incentives. Conveniently, South Carolina also has the lowest percentage of union workers in the nation, making it ideal for Boeing. The only problem was that there weren't enough qualified workers. Unlike Washington, where there's an ample amount of engineering and technical talent, Boeing found itself struggling to find enough workers with enough expertise. Which is pretty important when you're building a plane. It's easy to convince someone to move to Seattle. It's not so easy to convince someone to move to South Carolina, even with more money. So John Barnett, who again was a quality manager, started noticing problems with the planes. He discovered clusters of metal silvers hanging over the wiring that commands the flight controls. He says if those sharp metal pieces penetrated the wires, it would be catastrophic. Another time, he found out some workers installed faulty parts into the plane when he discovered a dented hydraulics tube that's part of the central system controlling the plane's movement. He reported all these incidents to management, but Boeing ignored him and refused to remove the debris and said to not worry about the faulty parts. They also got mad at him for putting these complaints in emails where it's traceable and told him to do face-to-face -face contact instead. John also said there were numerous complaints from employees that hundreds of tools were missing from the factory. Apparently, people would leave things like ladders and lights inside the tails of planes and didn't bother to remove them. Rick Master, a former Boeing technician, consistently found tubes of sealant, nuts, and stuff from the build process inside the planes. He reported these issues to management, but was eventually fired. Dan Ormson, an American Airlines employee whose job was to inspect the Dreamliners, said he always found loose objects touching electrical wiring and rags near the landing gear. He even found bubble wrap near the co-pilot pedal, which would cause it to jam mid-flight. Even the Air Force, one of Boeing's customers, complained about the debris and paused their orders for a while. So why didn't the factory managers do anything about it? They clearly knew what was happening with all these reports and unsatisfied customers. Well, it's probably because of corporate pressure. There was immense pressure from executives to prioritize productivity over quality. This toxic culture led to factory managers telling employees to install parts out of order so that it would appear to Boeing executives that everything was on schedule, when in fact the aircraft was far behind schedule. Managers who did report manufacturing errors or delays ended up facing retaliation. It's ironic because a lot of these Boeing executives have never worked on a plane, don't know the engineering behind it, don't know how it works, and doesn't know what it takes to manufacture a plane. The COO, Stephanie Pope, and VPs like William Apollo are all just finance majors and accounting majors with no actual engineering or manufacturing experience. These are the people who are probably pushing everyone to cut corners to meet unrealistic deadlines without understanding how, what it takes to actually build a plane. They just want the planes built as fast as possible to maximize shareholder value. I guess it all backfired because Boeing is now being sued by the DOJ for billions of dollars and no one trusts their planes anymore. Shuri Jaya Air Flight 182, departing from Jakarta, crashed 5 minutes after taking off killing all 62 people on board. It was a Boeing 737 and the autopsy showed a faulty auto throttle, resulting in an asymmetrical thrust. In 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crashed six minutes after taking off, killing all 157 people on board. While part of the reason was pilot inexperience, the eventual consensus from government agencies was that the design of Boeing's new flight control software, the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, was faulty and pushed the jet's nose down too much. After this incident, all 737 MAXs were grounded for two years. Boeing forked out a $2.5 billion fine to settle this investigation into the crashes of these flights. But then, just this January, an entire door flew out mid-flight on a Boeing 737 plane for Alaska Airlines. Shockingly, no one died, but that's pretty traumatizing. How no one got sucked out and fell 10,000 feet is a miracle. In the investigation, they found missing bolts in the door that was supposed to keep it attached to the plane. At a Boeing factory months earlier, workers were doing repairs on that plane, but did a half-assed job since they noticed that there were three missing bolts on the door, but didn't bother to fix it. 
When there's so many moving parts in a plane, it's honestly a miracle that not more crashes happen. Millions of pieces working together that require precision and constant maintenance is an incredibly hard job. When I was studying engineering in college, we took a software testing course. Different industries have different standards for margins of error. If you work at Google and create a bug, it's not a big deal. No one is going to die. But if you work on medical software or plane software, a 1% margin of error could be the reason someone lives or dies. There's no room for mistakes. The Federal Aviation Administration FAA, is a US federal government agency that regulates civil aviation in the United States. They run their approval process for boring planes, but clearly they're not doing a very good job with all these lapses in safety regulation. There's mounting evidence that the FAA's rules for certifying plane safety fundamentally conflicts with meaningful oversight. The 737 MAX was approved under the FAA's Organizational Designation Authorization ODA program, which allows aircraft manufacturers to certify parts of their own designs with limited federal oversight. Because of resource limitations, the FAA consistently pushes the certification of airworthiness to Boeing instead of monitoring it themselves. Concerned parties accuse the agency of not prioritizing oversight of the highest risk areas, like new aircraft designs, and that they didn't care enough to ensure that there was enough staff to do the job properly. The New York Times reported that during the 737 MAX certification process, the FAA handed nearly complete control to Boeing as the company was racing to finish the plane to compete with the rival manufacturer. When the plane crashed in 2018, the FAA admitted that they did not fully understand the automated system and that the regulator had never independently assessed the risk of the system before approving the jet. So they spend millions of dollars a year lobbying Congress to promote self-regulation so that they can cut costs, minimize training, testing requirements, and speed up the certification process. This makes Congress, the FAA, and Boeing participating in borderline legalized corruption, all at the expense of passengers. How lobbying is even legal makes no sense to me, because to me, it's basically legal bribery. People think China is corrupt, but the US is just as corrupt, they just do a better job at hiding it. John Barnett said, As a quality manager at Boeing, you're the last line of defense before a defect makes it out to the flying public and I haven't seen a plane out of Charleston yet that I'd put my name on saying it's safe and airworthy. If the people who are making the planes don't even trust them enough to fly on them, why should you? While I understand that too much government oversight and red tape can hinder innovation, when does it become too lax that it threatens public safety? Boeing, as slimy as they are, do the exact same thing as thousands of other corporations who lobby the government for their own benefit. Why else do you think Intuit spends millions of dollars a year lobbying the government to ensure our taxes stay complicated so we pay for TurboTax? It's all messed up.